Hey everybody, welcome to something new on this channel. Today I will be giving you my commentary and behind the scenes facts on Transformers Apocalypse War. I'm going to be doing commentary on my projects differently to other people's commentaries. The format will follow me going over specific scenes and giving you my thoughts and facts on said scenes. And um, bringing up details on the projects, so um, yeah, something similar to uh, New Rockstars just less grungier. Anyways, let's begin. A little backstory on the film. In 2020, I auditioned for a project called Transformers Apocalypse, created by the Martian Mari. The plot was simple. The Autobots were in a post-apocalyptic world, looking for the matrix of leadership, which would lead them to the Allspark. I auditioned for Ratchet and I got the part, which was cool and I uh, also volunteered to be a co-writer on the project. And um, the first few scenes like in the film, so like the scenes with Bumblebee and Sideswipe and Megatron and Scourge were all my idea. Well, I wrote those based on his ideas. So I kind of lied there. <laughs> Anyways, um, but uh, one day sometime in like early 2021, I realized that the Discord server for the project had been deleted. I, um, I approached the Martian Mari about this and he told me he had somewhat given up on the project. It was sad to see a project I was excited about working on to go, on, to, go to waste, so I made a decision. I contacted the Martian Mari and asked him if he would like me to finish the film, and he agreed. I also stated that he could get the director and co-writer credits. This was the first time I was filming a project based on someone else's script, but I worked hard to complete the script, whilst getting ideas and constructive criticism from my co-writer, in order to uh, make the film a reality. So, how about we get into the actual film? I wish there was another way. I have made many mistakes in the last few cycles, like bringing our war to another planet, resulting in the inhabitants' extinction. Our war has left this planet in chaos, and our supplies are at an all-time low. To stop the destruction and death, I was forced to send the Matrix to an undisclosed location. If I kept it, the Decepticons would have gotten it, and the location of the Allspark. However, not everything can be kept hidden forever. So when the time comes, I trust that you will find it before it falls into the Decepticons' hands. Stay safe, soldiers, I hope. I have bought you time, Primark. The film opens with an exposition monologue from Optimus Prime, played by the talented Orion Saxes. Uh, this speech was not in the original script, but I, I added it because I thought it would be better to explain the situation the Autobots were in, instead of just jumping straight into Bumblebee and Sideswipe looking for the Matrix. Fun fact, the opening scene was filmed in my front yard. The Matrix was in the original screenplay, uh, but I was tempted to cut it out mainly because I didn't own a Matrix. It was only when I got Studio Series 86 Hot Rod when I finally got a Matrix and decided to keep the MacGuffin in the film. This was the uh, first film ever where I used a green, scene, green screen. Uh, it came out better than expected, but I could have worked a little better on it. Uh, but. After a few practices, I'm getting better at green screen. I'm using it for more projects whenever I need it. Scourge is the uh, Starscream of the film. Starscream is already dead at this point. Originally, it was going to be Thrust, but I didn't have him, so I replaced him with Scourge, who's voiced by the awesome Orbital Bacon. You hear that, Scourge? Silence. Complete silence. 
After mega cycles of war, we finally have the peace we've longed for. However, after all my years of conquest, I still don't feel satisfied. This uh, little speech about silence said by Megatron, voiced by uh, Larry's Art Productions, was uh, loosely based on Ultron's little reflection moment when he finished conquering the entire universe in What If. It's also one of the only hints in the film where he shows a bit of regret for what he's done. He has everything, but he has no purpose. We jump to the Decepticons intercepting Bumblebee, voiced by Moi, and a uh, Science Wipe, voiced by Jing Mart 55. Here, Scourge boasts about how he will be the one to bring the Matrix to Megatron. A uh, little fun fact if you didn't see this, uh, you can see Dreadring and Thundercracker looking at each other like, seriously? This guy, come on, man. A little mistake I made whilst editing. Dreadwing and Thundercracker are shot from the right-hand side, but when we cut to reveal it, it was Ratchet shooting at them. He appears that he is aiming at them from the left. I only just realized that, like, whilst re-watching the film. When Bumblebee kicks Scourge, you can see the little white anime emphasis marks on the screen. I was... Uh, that's what I'm calling them. I got the uh, idea from Panda Jack's work. I'm sure you all know who he is. I'm not sure if you uh, noticed, but the figure I used for Bumblebee's robot mode was the Last Night repaint of the Age of Extinction Bumblebee figure. But the figure you used for his vehicle mode is the Dark of the Moon figure. I did this because the window on the Last Night figure's left arm is broken. This transition from the Last Night to the Dark of the Moon looked good in my opinion, so I kept it. Um, the last night Bumblebee figure was a gift to me from my friend in high school. Now, uh, here we have a reference to classic Megatron beating Starscream. Or, in this case, Scourge. It may be odd for, uh, Scourge of all characters to be beaten, but I added that scene to highlight the running joke in that, uh, Megatron does not really like his second commands. A little detail, detail in the scene where Ratchet fixes Soundwave is the uh, sound effect of the sparks flying. It is the same sound effect used by TFI Creations in his film Mexico City. We get a small cameo from the director, the Martian Mari, as the voice of Thundercracker. They have nowhere to go. I say we just bust in and take them out. <laughs> Now I get asked a lot about how I achieved this here. So I found a bloodshot wound effect on YouTube and downloaded it. In Video Leap, I changed the color of it from red to blue to resemble Energon spreading out. I then motion tracked the, shot, the gunshot with the figure. Simple as that. We uh, cut to the scene where Megatron crushes my character's Bumblebee's voice box, which is a reference to the way he lost his voice in the line continuity. Line. Well then, let's make it official. Is a reference to when Bitwing damages B's voice in 2018's Bumblebee. Originally, B wasn't going to lose his voice, but I decided to do it because one, none of my projects, released and unreleased, include B losing his voice, so I decided to do something new. Yeah, here. And two, it made sense in the fact that this is the consequence of B closing the doors. If he had gone with Sideswipe, he might have kept his voice.
This bit was my uh, one of my favorite bits to film, the uh, fight between Optus and Megatron in which Optimus wins. This was intentional as the Autobots were losing at the time, and they needed a moment where they had some kind of victory. Megatron's arm being cut off is a reference to the last night when he was when he lost his arm fighting Optimus in the final battle. One of my favorite lines in the film is this. Silence, Scourge. I am thinking. It's such a short yet simple line, and it means more than you think it would. Megatron is thinking. When he meets him, when we first meet him in the film, he is thinking about his life choices. He has some regret for what he's done, but at the end, he is thinking about his next move. Megatron's arc in this film is finding new purpose. With Optimus alive and with the Matrix found, and the fact that he lost and the fact that he lost that battle gives him motivation to fight. He wants to win. Next, we get introduced to a character who wasn't supposed to be in the film, Lockdown, voiced by Kyle, otherwise known as AHM1K, or Oha Megatron 1K. Scourge hires Lockdown to hunt Optimus and retrieve the Matrix. This scene is a reflection of all the bargaining scenes from film and television, and it was a fun film to write, fun scene to write. The movie ends with the Autobots getting ready to find the Allspark, which Optimus states is on Luna. Luna is the other name for the moon, so that is where the Allspark is located. Little do they know. Little do they know. <laughs> Little do they know. Lockdown is hunting them, which sets them up to be the main villain of Apocalypse War Part 2. Confirmed. The images in the back of the credits are actually a reference to Smitty Plays Into Darkness rolling credits at the end of each episode. But wait, if you stayed after the credits, there's a snort, snort, <laughs> there's a short sneak peek at the end for the next project set in the Apocalypse War universe. We see Hot Rod jump down from a cliff and run away. We get the name for the film Hot Rod Operation Umbra. This film will take on the heist genre and feature Hot Rod as he tries to obtain important information from a Decepticon outpost. It will also set up Apocalypse War Part 2 as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I might do more commentaries in the future. Uh, if you like this format, please do tell me if you think I should change some stuff. Uh, tell me what, I, what you think I should add or change. But for now, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon. I need to go to school because I'm filming. I'm filming this in my break. So, bye.